The hunting rifle reloads much faster. It's easier to aim with close range and of course allows for plenty of nutty no scope plays. What's going on guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Yo, I don't know if you wanna quit right now. Some of you guys have been on a losing streak. You better not quit. Man, you better get back up, man. You better keep grinding and be inspired because your whole day is about to change, man. So keep going. Even if you wanna quit in life, man, you better not, man. Stay motivated, stay inspired because your life is about to change for the good, my friends. So you better keep going. So lately, many of you on our Discord have been asking for loadout advice. Look, I get it, I really do. This is a really frustrating thing, man, to get down. This season, there are so many different choices from the charged shotgun, the crash pads, and even all those mythic items, man. So what do you run? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you seven insane loadouts we see pros running all the time. I'm gonna talk about each loadout's benefits, what kind of play styles they best fit with, and also some simple tips and tricks you can use to dominate with each one. You guys ready for this? I know I am. All right, guys, so before we start, make sure you like the video and subscribe. And for your question of the day, here we go. What is your ideal season three loadout? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, bunch of crunch army, where you at? It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. Here we go. But jumping right into this thing, the first loadout we call the default, and it consists of an AR, shotgun, SMG, big pots, and minis, or chuck splashes. A classic, right? <laughs> This one's been used for so many seasons now, benefiting both aggressive and defensive play styles. Okay, so despite the nerfs, the SMG and even rapid fire SMG are actually both still in great spots. And the double portion setup makes it so you can just quickly get back to full shields after a fight. All in all, a very well rounded kit. But by far, the most significant upside is how easy it is to require this loadout. You don't even have to rely on specific landing spots or henchmen, but instead, you open chest and you slowly build each part of it and maybe hit the upgrade bench and, you know, and then you're ready to move on. All right, so one pro we see use this loadout a ton is Mongrel. For this guy's AR, he prefers the normal version, but for his shotgun, he prefers the tap. I think that just has to do with his aggressive editing play style, but honestly, I feel like you could carry the charged shotgun if you really wanted to. So ultimately, your shotgun and AR choices in this loadout will boil down to preference, okay? All right, what's the downside? Whew. Well, if you aren't carrying chuck splashes, you have zero white heals, which isn't all that great for when you might take storm damage during the end game. So when heading into the end game, Mongrel avoids this by either just hitting up some fishing spots or by dropping his SMG for a triple heal setup instead. Pretty smart when you think about it. All right, so coming up, we've got amazing loadouts that are sure to help you win more games. But if you need help with your mechanics or game sense, this is what you gotta do, all right? You gotta check out ProGuys.com because ProGuys.com has you covered. Our site has exclusive courses where top pros teach all of their secrets. And of course, you can always get a one-on-one -on -one session with the pro coach if that's your thing. So check out the link in the description when you're ready to start your path to improvement. All right, but now back to the video. Our next loadout is the triple heal consisting of an AR, tack shotgun, minis, or splashes, big pots, and floppers. All right, for all you defensive in-game players out there, the triple heal should be your go-to. All right, let me tell you this. One simple reason is that you should never underestimate the power of healing items. Anytime you get low, you can always just tunnel and just reposition and heal right back up to full health. Like, just imagine going up against someone with floppers and chug splashes, even if you hit them for like 180. Just one five second opportunity is enough to just heal back to full. They can do that multiple times during the fight, and too often, those heals will be what gives them the advantage. Another reason the triple heal is so good is because heals are one of the most important things you can just possess for end games. With floppers and splashes, you can dip into the storm, which has remained a viable strat since the beginning of chapter two. There there's a reason so many pros have called out for floppers to be nerfed, cause they're just ridiculous in the end game. You can get free placements, find sneaky kills, and even approach high ground from inside the storm. Okay, but I guess the downside is that you have to fish those floppers in the first place, right? Which requires implementing fishing spots 
an ice chest into your loot route. But really, that's not really a huge restriction. Just something that may not allow this loadout to work with every single drop spot. In contrast to the last defensive kit, this next one is aggressive, man. And we're gonna be calling it the Anti-Turtle Loadout. It consists of an AR, charged shotgun, SMG, minis, and one of the following three, an RPG, stink bombs, or grenades. Clearly, all items designed to counter bills and turtle. Now, RPGs and stink bombs only drop from Marauders, which makes getting those items in every game not really feasible. You have to get lucky enough to even find those guys, then you have to hope that they drop what you need. But don't worry about it, my friends, because even if you don't find Marauders for an RPG or stinks, grenades are honestly just as viable. Though for those, what you need to learn is the grenade strat. All right, the grenade strat is really nothing new, but if you need a reminder, just mark your target. Stand back about 65 meters away, aim about 80% of the way up the marker, and throw your grenades. Okay, so if you line it up correctly, your opponent won't even be able to see or hear a barrage of grenades coming. With stinks, our best bit of advice is to save them for when your opponent gets low and tries to heal. Don't just throw them right away, man, and definitely don't waste them by just stacking them in the same spot. Use them to cut off exit points. You know, for instance, like if your opponent is boxed up, throw one on the left side so that they're forced to edit out the right, which you'll be ready for. Overall, this aggressive anti-turtle loadout is amazing for fragging during the mid and late games, but lacks really the healing potential other kits have. It's risky, but if you're hungry for quick and easy limbs, this is the loadout for you. If you guys want to stay up to date with the latest meta changes and build techniques, head on over to ProGuys.com, where we have a range of services from play with pros to online courses, which aim to perfect, you know, certain aspects of your game. Link is in the description. All right, guys, next up, we've got another classic aggressive loadout, the Sniper. All right, <laughs> this one has you run an AR, shotgun, either a bolt sniper or a hunting rifle, and double utility. Now, this loadout's not new or anything like that, but there are a few considerations that you gotta make. First up, which sniper to run, man? Honestly, there are sides to both. The bolt does slightly more body shot damage, and since it comes with a scope, it's just much easier to line long distance shots. On the other hand, the hunting rifle reloads much faster, it's easier to aim with close range, and of course, allows for plenty of nutty no-scope plays. Both snipers are actually very similar in strength, so mostly, it really boils down to how you want to play with them. But really, one thing many players don't realize about the bolt is its surprisingly high structured damage. Okay, remember these numbers, all right? Because if you can weaken your opponent's bills to that amount, your bolt can one shot. So if you can just sort of use it just like you would the heavy sniper for surprise wall takes and bursting into your opponent's box, that would be amazing. Now, compare that to the hunting rifle and you're gonna see it fall slightly behind in terms of damage to builds, making it much more challenging to one shot builds. Okay, as for double utility, that means that you can run two heals or you can just run, you know, one healing item and mobility. Obviously, double heals are great no matter what the situation is, but mobility can come in handy, especially crash pads. Like, if you land a snipe on someone 50 meters away, a couple of crash pads can get you there in no time. And because of that, you might even arrive just in time to prevent healing. And speaking of crash pads, all right, let's take a look at the crash pad loadout. All right, this balanced choice has you run an AR, tax shotgun, crash pads, minis, or chug splashes, and big pots. Honestly, this loadout has been gaining steam like crazy in the past couple of weeks as more and more players are just starting to understand how powerful crash pads can really be. I mean, you could just face yourself into someone's box just by just walking up to their wall and tossing the pad near the top. Similarly, you can use them to instantly break your opponent's bills from a distance, which might allow you to sneak in some shots. Okay, so when it comes to positioning in fights, crash pads can be used to close the gap, disengage from fights, and even take high ground without having to spend any materials. Amazing. And their usefulness carries on into the end game as well, as a rotation method and as a way to secure height for the win. Seriously, there's just so much that you can do with crash pads. I love them. I really do. And while sometimes you might not get as much use from them as you would, you know, double heals or you know, running nades or something like that, these things are really starting to become the meta. And just as with all things meta, you're better off getting used to them now than later. 
All right, guys, now it's time for what I'm sure many of you guys have been waiting for, and that's Mythic Loadouts. All right, when it comes to Mythics, there aren't really any specific loadouts. Instead, you sort of take other loadouts and just make replacements. So, like for the Shockwave Launcher and Grappler, you can take the Crash Pad loadout we just showed and replace the pads. And with the Chug Jug, you could choose the default or any loadout really, and just simply replace one of the hills. But surprisingly, not all Mythics are created equal, and some you might not even want to run. For example, the Shockwave Launcher and Grappler are insanely useful for rotating, repositioning in fights, taking high ground, and you know, so on and so forth. Those you carry any chance you get, but the usefulness of the Chug Jug absolutely pales in comparison. Sometimes, with how long that thing takes to pop, you're even better off just running regular heals. As for the Mythic weapons, Ocean's Burst Rifle and Jules Drum Gun, yeah, they're okay to carry, but a lot of pros don't even bother with them. Many still prefer regular SMGs over the drum gun because those don't eat up medium ammo. And the burst rifle? Well, it's a burst rifle. If you like him, great, but I feel like most of us would just run a SCAR. The only weapon really 100% worth running every single time is Kit's Charge Shotgun since it has extra ammo, higher one-shot potential, and excellent synergy with the Shockwave Launcher. All right, moving on. Lastly, we've got the Harpoon Utility Loadout, although this isn't one that's typically played in solos. It's more suited for team modes with one player on the team running an AR, shotgun, double heals, and a harpoon. Their job is to fish up what they can for their team and just score all the loot that they can find during the end game. With how stacked trio matches have been, especially lately, you seriously need to consider running a harpoon because more often than not, you're gonna see loot that you can't reach off in the distance, perhaps in the storm. A harpoon can, however. You can just grab heals like floppers and splashes. You can get mats to keep tunneling your team in or you can just grab rockets for RPGs or the Shockwave Launcher, which might just be the thing that keeps you and your team in the game. Not to mention all the fighting applications such as knocking down unprotected ramps or pulling off an RPG harpoon combo with your team. Seriously, man, the harpoon is so versatile, but like we said, it's nowhere near as useful to run in solos. Still, I will say this, like if you're playing trios and you don't have a designed harpoon player, switch things up, give it a try, and you might just end up finding it really helpful. All right, guys, so that's it for the loadouts. Now, I just wanna say that you're not always gonna complete the entirety of these loadouts every single match. Sometimes, you know, you might not get a bolt sniper or you won't have the time to go to fish for floppers. But in those cases, don't stress it, man. Don't panic. You know, if you have bad RNG and all that stuff, like just try to fill in the gas with something similar, okay? Obviously, with how big this season's loot pool is, we couldn't discuss every single item out there. So if you know a really, really powerful loadout that we missed, hey, just feel free to share it in the comments down below. I'm really curious to, to see what you guys think. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, like I said earlier, man, like I don't care how bad life is getting right now. Do not quit, do not give up. I don't care if you're going through it right now, right? And the world just seems to close in on you. But I just wanna tell you, man, I believe in you. I really do, man, make me proud, man. Bunch of Crunch Army, let's change this world. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to give the video a like and sub with notifications on for more tip videos like this one and keep eating that bunch of crunch. And I'll see you later, peace.